Good uh, morning, everyone. We are continuing with a series of lectures under endocrine physiology. So today's lecture is on the parathyroid glands and physiology of bone. So under this uh, lecture, it's a long lecture, but we just can't uh, summarize it. So we just have to talk about these things. So we are going to look at the parathormone, or also called the parathyroid hormone. And then we are going to look at uh, disorders of the parathyroid glands. Just to define these disorders so that um, you may appreciate. We'll talk about things like uh, hypoparathyroidism, hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, I mean. And uh, we'll talk about some parathyroid functional test. So after that, we'll also look at calcitonin. Then we'll look at calcium metabolism. And then we'll look at phosphate metabolism. And lastly, we are going to end with the physiology of, uh, of bone. So we'll start with, um, with the uh, parathormone. We'll start with the parathormon. So there's this diagram for you here. It's important to know that human beings, there are four parathyroid glands which are situated on the posterior surface of the upper and the lower pores of the thyroid gland. We talked about the thyroid gland, but it's just important to know that uh, these are parathyroid glands. They are very small glands, measuring about 6 mm long, 3 mm wide, and 2 mm thick. And their appearance, they are like, they are darkish brown in color. So the parathyroid uh, hormones are secreted by the parathyroid gland. So when you examine using uh, histological techniques, you're going to see that uh, this parathyroid gland is made up of the oxfew cells and the chief cells. But the chief cells, they are the ones that secrete the parathyroid hormone. And the oxfew cells, these are the degenerated chief cells, and their function is not uh, very well known. But uh, it is it is known that dur uh, during some pathological conditions, such as adenoma, the, para uh, the, 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 the oxfew cells are able to, to release um, these parathormone or parathyroid hormones. Okay, so when you examine histologically, you are going to see two types of cells, the, the, the chief cells which secrete the the parathormone or the, para the PTH, which I'll just be calling it PTH. And the oxfew cells, their major role is not very known, but in pathological condition, they, be they can become uh, secretory. That is, they can begin to secrete uh, PTH. Now, the parathormone, just a brief uh, understanding of this. This is a, is a protein in nature, okay? The source of this hormone is the chief cells of the parathyroid gland. The chemistry of this hormone is it's purely made up of amino acids, okay? It has been sequenced and shows that it is, it is made up of 84 amino acids. And we know what amino acids, these are the functional or building bro uh, blocks of uh, proteins. And in terms of how half-life, once it is secreted, how long does it take for half the quantity to disappear? It's about 10 minutes. Okay. So PTH has a half-life of about 10 minutes, 
And in a normal healthy person, the, the levels of PTH should be between 1 to 6 nanograms okay, per deciliter. So that's why I said that hormones are released in very minute quantities. So the normal PTH levels in the blood should be between 1 to 6 nanograms per deciliter. Okay, so now how are these uh, PTH synthesized? How are the PTH synthesized? They follow the same general uh, uh, synthesis of proteins. The first thing that we have is the prepro PTH, okay, which contains about 115 amino acids. And then the prepro uh, PTH will enter the endoplasmic reticulum of the chief cells. And once inside the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, there it is converted into prohormone called the pro PTH, which has 90 amino acids. In some books they say 96. And then the pro PTH enters the Golgi apparatus where it is converted to PTH and the inactive peptide. So it follows the same general synthesis of proteins where PTH is encoded by a gene in chromosome 11. Okay. It is encoded by a gene in chromosome 11 and then after translation it becomes preproparathyroid hormone. And then in the endoplasmic reticulum, it is converted to pro-PTH. And then in the Golgi apparatus, it is removed and packaged in secretory vesicles within the cells of the parathyroid uh, gland. So once that it has been synthesized, how is it metabolized? We know metabolism is the, it can either be breaking down, which is called catabolism, or the building up. But usually it is broken down. So we do not want PTH levels to continually remain high in blood, so it has to be metabolized. So it is metabolized by the the kaffir cells of the liver by means of a process called proteolysis. And then it can also be metabolized in the kidneys. Okay, so in terms of significance, the liver plays a very important role in metabolism of many hormones, PTH. And the kidneys about 20% of the PTH is metabolized in the kidneys. And then waste products are released in urine. Okay. So that's the metabolism of PTH. Now, this same hormone, what's the function of this same hormone? What's the function of this same hormone? It's important to know that Every hormone in the body, it has unique function, okay? So even PTH, it has a specific function that it plays in the body. The primary action of PTH is to maintain calcium levels. This is homeostasis. We know that homeostasis is the maintenance of constant internal environmental conditions. So. Calcium levels are maintained within this range, 9 to 11 milligrams per deciliter. So how does it do that? It ensures that uh, calcium levels are maintained by acting on the bones, by influencing the physiology of the kidneys, by influencing the physiology of the GIT. Okay. So calcium levels should be maintained. And we, I also mentioned in the beginning that uh, every component in plasma, be it calcium, sodium, 
uh, water, it, is, it has to be maintained within normal range to avoid complication. If there is too much calcium, that's called hypercalcemia, which will affect physiological process. Okay. So it has to be maintained within the normal uh, levels by PTH. So what we mean is that PTH will be released whenever the calcium levels drops. Okay, we'll talk about the regulation of PTH, but at this moment in time, it's important to know that the, 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 the purpose of PTH is to maintain the calcium levels between 9 to 11 milligrams per deciliter. Above 11, we are calling it hyperparathyroidism. And below 9, we are calling it hypoparathyroidism. We'll talk about this later on. So this diagram shows <clears throat> this diagram shows the action of PTH on these three important uh, organs, the bones, the kidneys, and the intestines. Okay. So the stimulating factor of PTH secretion is low levels of uh, calcium, which is hypocalcemia. Whenever the levels of calcium starts dropping, there is what we call the calcium sensing receptor there. Okay? Calcium sensing receptor within the, the, the chief cells. The chief cells, we know they have the calcium sensing receptor. So they'll begin secreting the levels of, they'll begin secreting PTH. So PTH will act on the bone, it will act on the kidneys, it will also act on the intestine. So let's try to understand what happens when it acts on the bones. <clears throat> when it acts on the bone, it enhances the resorption of calcium from the bones. In other words, it increases the osteoclastic activity. Okay? By increasing the proliferation of the osteoclasts. Okay, so therefore the bones begin to be dissolved by osteoclast. When they begin to be dissolved, we know that the bones, they have storage of calcium. The, the, the levels of calcium starts to increase in, in plasma. I'll come back to this later on to specifically go into detail to describe the mechanism. And then on the kidneys, <clears throat> it increases the reabsorption of calcium ions from the renal tubules along with magnesium and hydrogen ions. It also increases uh, calcium uh, reabsorption mainly from the, from the distal convoluted tubule. We know the distal convoluted tubule. After the, after the proximal tubule, there's a loop of Henry now, the distal convoluted tubule and the uh, proximal part of the collecting duct, so it increases reabsorption. Okay. So what other things can we see here? It increases 125-dihydrooxycholecalcifero. Um, okay. It increases the formation of 125-dihydrooxycholecalcifero. The other name for this is just activated form of vitamin D or calcitriol. At the, at the same time, it also decreases the reabsorption of phosphates. Okay. So, let me repeat. Well, once PTH has been released by the chief cells of the parathyroid gland, it acts on the kidneys. It has three effects there. We can see that... Um, we can see that it, it increases the, the formation of 125-dihydrooxycholocalciferol, uh, which is an activated form of vitamin D. It also increases calcium uh, reabsorption, specifically in the proximal convoluted tubules and the proximal part of the collecting duct. And then number three, it decreases the, it decreases the reabsorption of Phosphates. 
So we have more phosphates in the renal tubules or in urine. So PTH will increase the presence of phosphates in urine, which we call phosphaturic effect of PTH. Phosphaturic effect of PTH. Okay. So in people with hyperparathyroidism, we are going to see high levels of what? Phosphates in urine. Okay. And then the other function of uh, PTH, it acts on the intestine. But here it acts indirectly. It acts on the intestine, which is part of the digestive system or the gastrointestinal tract. What does it do? It increases calcium absorption. It also increases phosphate absorption. Okay. So PTH increases the absorption of calcium ions indirectly with the help of uh, vitamin D, which has been formed from the kidneys. And this vitamin, in turn, will increase the absorption of calcium from the GIT because it increases the expression of cow binding. We'll talk about it later. And then, and then also we've seen that it has effect on uh, phosphate reabsorption. So these are the two effects. Now, there are important questions here which we need to ask. How does PTH maintain calcium levels by acting on the bones? We need to go into detail um, what happens here, what happens at the kidneys, what happens in the intestines. Okay, so this will be the next lecture. Thank you very much.